Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media and I'm still working on the backgrounds of these. I have not done another layer yet. Um, there are a couple of them that I am quite happy with. Um, I don't know what to do about that white part but I guess it's fine. Um, so they're not going to be touched so much. Um, and then I've got I've added a layer to a couple of these and I am in the um, the stage of things called trust the process. <laughs> um, so I've, I've like this one is just really dark and needs help. Um, so right now I'm doing what Carrie the Crafter calls kissing the plate. So I'm adding a layer with my gel plate. Just I need to lighten some of these up for sure. So I've got um, my buttermilk here which is a color that seems to be in the kit. It's gonna mix a little bit with this, what is this color? Mushroom, that's what I thought. It's gonna mix a little bit with that. I mean, and you can actually just do all your layers like this. I'm getting all these little marks because there's still flower, flowers, flower debris on my own. So kissing the plate is just, you just tap it down and you just tap it down on the plate to get you know, random marks here and there. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, that one I can actually probably just do a light coat all over. Once I kiss the plate, then there's less on there too. So when I do a layer, it's gonna be random and light and dark in different areas. Um, let's see, I think this one's okay too. This one's a good one. I can leave that one alone. I don't have a lot of, this one needs something. Should we bring some more greens into it or some reds? I did find my holiday red and Christmas green. So there's that. I don't know if this green's gonna be much different, much different than the green that's already on there. It will be once it mixes with the buttermilk. It is definitely a brighter green. And if I get too much, um, like right now, that is too much paint if I was just doing gel, pl gel printing. But uh, for, let's see, now I got my finger in the paint and got my finger on there. So we'll just, we'll, we'll fix that later. All right, so there, we got some more marks on the back of here. And let's see. Yeah, here's another trust the process piece. Let me spread this out so that it can be a little bit thinner don't forget the middle so there's not a lot on there but there's some different color on there now um, I don't, don't think I want to add this green to this one let's see that oh this could use some brightening up for sure get the middle and there's less paint on there now too so you know I was able to press down a little bit harder We've got some little dendritic things happening because the paint was so so thick so now I spread it out it'll be an even thinner layer of paint and uh, this one I just did the buttermilk on I'm gonna go ahead and try not to use my fingerprints or in my hand necessarily because I don't want it to look like I pressed it down with my hand that that is actually quite a challenge because uh, I kind of that's kind of where my mind goes that's when you're tapping it down you kind of you're using your hand you just have to remember you don't want your hand print on there so that actually is nice we got some darker green and some lighter greens happening and it looks even lighter because there's white behind it. Oh, here, this one is all red. So we will just pick that up. See, this green has a little bit of blue in it. Oh, that's why I was using the agave, which is like uh, that color, kind of, sort of. Actually, do I have that color? That sage color. Ooh, let's lose some of that next, because that will pretty things up. Come on. And so that just picked up, you know, some stuff that was left. And then if I want to kind of get that white covered at the top just kind of miss it again and again and again <laughs> just try to get some of it with the uh the bits on the corner there trying just to cover up that white bit i got some more on this side too which you know i don't have to do it this pass around it can happen next time as well there we go let's see 
Uh, I was thinking this. I gotta shake this really good because it's a chalk paint, and if I don't shake it really, really good, it will um just have like the oil. It separates when it's in there. So, but it's a real pretty sage green, and that color is in the kit. Thankfully, yay! We like when a pretty color is in a kit. I mean, obviously, they're a pretty kit, so there would be pretty colors, right? I'm not too concerned. Right. And that will help lighten this one up a little bit, too. Just kind of focusing on the corners a little bit. Get a little bit in the middle. And that's what that looks like. Um, oh, this one I think already has like some similar colors. There we go. Just got another layer. Not sure where to set these. This, the red is a little bit stark on there. So I'm just going to pick up what's left. I'm not worried about where I got paint on the front of these because it's a grungy kit. So I'm not overly concerned about it. I mean, if it really bothers you, if that happens to you, you could just uh, put a pocket over it or something or stencil over it so it hides it a little bit. Get that little bit off of there. Probably getting paint on the other side. Um, but you can see that pushed back the red a little bit. Just just by getting that little bit of fit. There was like a film of paint on there. And so that is what I'm going to keep doing, I think. Is do some kissing on the plate for a little bit. And um, when I change what I'm doing, I'll come back. Or do you want me to keep doing this? I don't know. You can't answer me. I don't know. I don't know how. But, you know, if I don't record this and I get tired, I might end up with, like, no video for Friday. And that will make me sad. All right. So here's that. I guess I'll just keep keep going. So you can kind of see the process. There we go. You can see that it's not a, a perfect process. There we go. Just gets on there a little bit different each time. Oh, this one has the inks on it. Um, but I want it to like, look like it belongs <laughs> with the other pieces. Or it'll go in a separate journal where all the ones with the inks on it go. I don't know. But I'll just add a layer of paint to that. See if I can get the edges here. Any other edges? Yep. I do. I got edges. They need a covering. And I'm losing control. I love this kit. I will link it down below. The Etsy shop from which it came. Let's see. Do we want to put a little bit of red on this? Should we go to the red now? Holiday red? Holiday red, actually. Holiday red was a little bit bright. Let me try the cherry cobbler and see if that is any... Oh, that's kind of a pinky. I have not found the right red paint yet that goes perfectly. There's no perfect uh, with this uh, journal kit, but if I do, I'll let you know. Yeah, see, that's much more pink than I really want it to be, but I'm still going to add a little bit in there. Here and there. That's got no red on it or anything yeah there was not as many reds used as there are greens all right let's try the holiday red again and see if that well it's going to mix with this so it won't be let's see yeah, it's a little bit more orangey red than the reds I've got here. The one that's in the kit. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I want more of a, a tomato-y red, I guess. Alright, so more of a, let's see, let's try this flamenco red. 
did not shake it. I probably should have. If I find the right red, then everything's going to get a little bit of that red. <laughs> Just saying. So there's that. See, this one's more of a burgundy red on this one, of course. So there's like some burgundies and some tomato reds in this kit, apparently. Let's try that flamenco red again. I mean, or I could try a Tuscan red as well. That one I'm almost out of. Tuscan red would have just a little bit of, be kind of like burgundy with just a little bit of orange in it, right? What I'm hoping, I'm using that um, particular, let's try it on this one. Oh yeah, that one seems to be fairly um, closer. So we just got a little bit of red popping on there. Popping. And this one, like I said, we are in the trust the process stage of things. Don't forget the metal. Um, I mean, I do kind of like how neutral this one is. I could keep it neutral. It needs more layers, though. All right, we'll just do... Grab the rest of what's on here. I think the Tuscan red and the flamenco red are potentially the direction, closer to the direction I want to be for my reds. And, of course, the greens, I'm all... All the greens and light blues seem to work fairly well, although the, one of the teals is a little dark. All right, this one's really burgundy. So let's just put a little bit of that on there. Just to brighten it up a little bit. And this one, oh yeah, that had like the permanent maroon on there. So it's really, really out there with the uh, color being a little bit too far. That's all right. Uh, Tuscan red again. Let's try that on a few more. So yes, it is. Even I have the uh, what what some people call the ugly face, and, and that's where you are just trusting the process because. You know, you're not loving how things are looking. And you're like, is it ever going to get better? It will. It, it will get better at some point. Um, even if I'm doing the same color twice, I'm okay with that. Or similar color because it's still going to layer differently. And it'll be a little bit thicker in some spots. Then when you do it like that. So, you know, there's, there's no right or wrong way. To do it just have fun with it that's, that's what I say have fun with it for sure all right I want to bring in let's go ahead and grab some antique white which will pink out but that's okay just get some of the red off of the And it'll brighten these up a little bit, too. Just kissing the plate. The middle. At least ignore the middle. So that's brighter. <laughs> we'll give it that. I don't mind if it's like a, a lighter color like that because then I well then you can see what you're rating for one <laughs> really see that light blue I could have done all the backs with like light, all the little light blues and greens and I probably would have liked these even better but no I had to use all the colors in the kit this is definitely a little strong so let's do some buttermilk Oh, 
which will also have some pink to it. Alright, I'm getting warm. Don't know if I should open a window or... Alright, that obliterated a lot of it, which um, I'm, I'm not upset about. Because <laughs> it was just too much. That's the part of the uh, trust the process. This one is really dark too. Just kind of getting it on the edges there and then just kind of pick up what's in the middle. Now it's not so dark anymore. Yeah, these dark ones are it's just too dark. You just, you just need a little something. Or a lot of something. Right, I'm going to move to doing something different for a minute. Um, this is not going to lift up very well. This, I was cleaning off the plate, but this did not land on there straight. So we're going to have a lot left on the plate, I think. But that's all right, because then there will be more crunchiness to lift off later. This was the, what's it called? Sulfite paper. It, it, it didn't, well, it already had some paint on it. So that was probably part of the problem, but it didn't lay flat. So I missed a big portion of what I was trying to pick up there. So I'm not sure that I like sulfite paper for a gel plate, I guess, is where I'm going with that information. But that plate can go out of my way. So the cherry cobbler is definitely not right. And I think this one was a little bit the holiday red. That one was a little red red. Just needs a tiny bit of orange. Um, let's see, any of these other colors? wonder about this. Eh, this is Red Flash. And so I'll hold it out, but it, I think it might be a little more pink than I want. Oh yeah, that's definitely not the color I want. Here's the holiday red, really. That's nice and messy now. This has white paint all over it, but I'm just gonna, it's just gonna be my palette. Apparently, I never picked up what was there. All right, let me find my colors. Okay, I think that this lipstick red, which is Folk Art Matte 437, works actually really well, hopefully. It did on the paper with the white background. Let's see how it does with other backgrounds. I like the, the layering of the colors is always nice though. Um, I use the palette over here so that I can get my brayer fully covered so that I, um, and I'm just kind of like going across lightly. I'm not pushing down real hard. I mean, well now I'm pushing down hard because I just kind of want to flatten that. <laughs> but by going lightly the first time, it's just giving me, you know, variation of color. So I'm going to keep doing that with the red. Let's see. And how is that red? So this is the red. I'm going to dry probably a little bit. And that is the kit. So that lipstick red, it's a wiener. The lipstick red is a winner. Now I'm pressing harder because I have much less on there. It goes right here. So I'm going to go through these with this color and uh, see how how things look after that and then I'll probably bring in the uh, the prettier colors not the red's not a pretty color I know my friend's favorite color is red I don't know if it's like a specific red or all the reds but I'm still pressing lately this time because I want it to kind of stay thick on there let's see anything else could use some lipstick putting lipstick on a cat on a what is it lipstick on a pig right now some of these it does feel like I'm putting lipstick on a pig but in the end we're trusting the process probably what I will call this video 
it's trusting the process. You just keep adding layers until you like it, basically. If you don't like it, you're not done with it. You still, you got more, you can add to it if you don't like it. All right, that's a little bit thick on there. It'll take a minute to dry and that's okay. Let's bring in some of the red on here. I have a lot less paint on it now. So I'm just getting, you know, touches of it. It's just a little bit of a layer. But it just every little bit adds. This one definitely needs lots of things. Maybe I should just go neutral with this one. I don't know. I'm just going to do layers like I've been doing. Layers have been proven to be uh, effective and pretty. So I'm just trusting the process. Could I say that a few more times? That is really thick. So I'm going to take this one and just... Press it on top of that one. All right, so that just added a little bit onto this one. And uh, that's what that one is looking like. And I gotta be careful not to stack the wet ones on top of each other. Um, just a little bit oh, of red in the background. And I do realize I will probably end up getting, um, you know, paint on this side because oh, this one see that uh the yellowy color here all right so let me try to lift some of that off of the plate maybe i'll switch to a different paper bag a clean paper bag for the next color maybe since this is wet that didn't really help much did it all right let me get a new bag all right, I think this one, this Villa Verde Green, or Villa Green, 2630 Folk Art Matte, is going to uh, cover a, uh, it's going to fix a lot. <laughs> I'm asking a lot of a paint right now. But I think it is going to help tone down a lot. It's kind of like a really neutrally green blue. And, um... Gonna go. Just trust in the process. Trust in the process. I um, wanna. It's really thick. I just kind of wanna mush down another paper. Don't leave it too long, or it'll stick. Because you know, paint works like glue, kind of. All right, so that gave me that on that side which is cool and that's what it's looking like here which already improving <laughs> all right this one is just way too dark so just gonna, and I like um, I'm kind of since we have that patchwork effect getting the lines is um working to my benefit actually <laughs> Because then it will kind of reflect what's going on on the other side of the papers when I have those lines. So those lines don't bother me at all. Let's go ahead and press this one down. And uh, don't be surprised if every page ends up with this particular... This one and agave are going to be... So we have just little lines here and there on that one. So that's what that one's looking like now. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, speaking of agave, I didn't see that one when I was picking out my paints. What's this one? The sage? We could do sage, too. The sage is actually pretty similar. It's, like, super similar. Like, you know, they're almost the same color. We still have red popping through. Good. All right, this one I'm going to press down again. I just did that one on the other one. So if I keep using the same one to press down, it'll just keep adding a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. Or actually, that's probably enough already. And there's that one. Going to run out of room to put things. All right, and this one has some of this color in the background. 
And because I have all those little flower petal thingies still stuck on this brayer, I'm getting that pattern back there, which is kind of a cool thing. At some point, I will clean off this brayer, but I'm not there yet. All right, so there's that. So bringing in a neutral color on top of these really bright colors, I think is really helpful. Um, might even just do the antique white on this one, which will get a little bit of the other greens mixed in with it. That's what's on the gel plate. And the reason I like to use my gel plate for a palette is so that I get my brayer completely covered so that I don't end up with like those ovals like you get on your gel plate sometimes. All right, that's good. I actually... I don't want to cover it completely and I like that it's thicker there and less thick there so we still have some red showing and it gives that patchwork effect because you know we do have patchwork happening in here oh this is the one that was <sighs> my husband's annoyed because my son's girlfriend is in town so he's not doing the things he should be doing on his day off like his own laundry and but then my husband does his laundry, and then it's like, well, why doesn't he do his laundry? If you wouldn't do it for him, you wouldn't have a choice if you'd have to do it. You know, I don't do stuff for him. He needs to do it himself. But my husband's impatient and stresses out when it doesn't get done, so he just does it. And then he complains about it. <laughs> so there's that one. Just added a little bit of something. I really like that. Um, I'm going to use the buttercream too because there's definitely some buttercream kind of oops, stuff happening in the kit. That is a lot. Like so much that my brayer doesn't even want to, <laughs> doesn't even want to roll. Uh, I don't want it super thick. I'm just like really lightly pressing like oh, there. It pressed a lot more on the bottom apparently. Just rolling it and lifting it. And rolling it, just just tiny, tiny minute amounts. Just getting it on there a little bit. I don't want to cover the whole thing. But you can see how this color is going to work with the kit, as is that antique white and uh, whatnot. And it was nice and thick, so I was able to get some stuff happening on this one which still needs a lot more. That's still in the trust the process phase of things. All right. This one, I don't want to lose the red and green in there. And then so sometimes I'll start on one end, come back the other end. Let's go ahead and press this one down. That's another trust the process one. You know where it did not do what I wanted it to do when I first put it down. Oh, I gotta remember I want to add in some of the blue back in, but I might do that with ink, so that's fine. All right, and then I'm gonna come here again and I'm gonna go the other direction. So the red and green will be pushed to the background. Wait a bit. Let's go ahead and press this down again. We'll bring some Prussian blue in somewhere. I mean, not Prussian blue. Uh, Payne's gray, but it might be in the form of stamping and inking. Oh, this one. I think this one already has this color in it. But I definitely want to push quite a bit of that back, actually. I don't have as much paint on, and so I am pressing harder. It does give you a different look when you press harder um, with less paint is why I do both ways and you know pushing everything to the back you could use paintbrush credit card anything you want to get your paint on your paper it's just about getting paint on the paper uh, I don't think I want mushroom what about this too bright well we can always cover it again this is sky blue light uh, acrylic Amsterdam 
if you're not sure what color you list colors you like and you want to try like a nicer brand of paint uh, you might want to get them like as a set so like it costs less to buy a set of paints than to buy individual paints and then as you run out of paints you'll be able to say oh this is a color I know I'll use and then you can buy that in a bigger size all right and there is that can you see how like trusting the process things are already starting to look better even like one layer at a time but over you know slowly they are starting to look better Let's see, see that, that Payne's gray back there? It looks purple and I have, I, t I take umbrage. <laughs> I have an issue with that. All right, let's bring back, I've got some green back there. So this is olive green. I'm not sure what it'll do if it mixes with that light blue, but that's okay. Just gonna, I'm gonna cover as much of the background as I can, get that purpley blue hiding because there is none of that in the kit <laughs> i don't want to bring it in the paint's gray yes that where the paint's gray mixed with the uh red not so much all right so now it's just dark blue in the background with bits of red looks less purple now already just just saying already that improved it so more with trust the process let's see that has a little bit of green in it do we want to add what do we have here? Oh, I have it. some Cascade Folk Art number 6440. It's a matte, it's a chalk paint. I think I get these at Joanne Fabrics. Um, I don't know. I like the, whoops, see, it does it. it's not mixed. That's, I shook it, but you would never know that I shook it. So then it does this weird separating thing, which, you know, if I use colors I like, no matter what's in the background, uh, if there's colors I like on top, it, it should end up okay. <laughs> you know? Alright, I want the lines to be more than just those. I don't want it to look like brayer lines. I'd rather it look more like patchwork lines. So, I know I covered up quite a bit of that, but I, I wasn't a fan. And it's starting to get better. This one, also not a huge fan of, but it didn't have a lot going on with it yet. Apparently, a lot of uh, paint is sticking to the, the edges of my thing, my whatchamacallit. Let's do some more sage. Whoops. Should have shook it again. Those chalk paints, you gotta shake really well, apparently. Do another yeah maybe just do down the middle a little bit thicker and have the rest of it be less thick there we go improving okay oh I got to the bottom of that pile now we can go oh this one needs something I was trying to um, do like the red and black because some of these were just red and black but uh, I didn't necessarily do what I was. I mean, color-wise, it's fine. It's just dark. Just gonna go in between that line to get some more lines in the middle because this is really thick on the ends. Probably because it needs to be cleaned off. That's why. Sometimes your paint will start to build up here, so you just take um, something to, you know. I mean, because it does stick out some, but eventually your paint starts to rub on this, which is a little bit of a pain, but that's all right. All right, that's another layer of that. This, oh my goodness, this definitely needs, let's get that, oh, let's green, let's add some of this. Maybe we'll keep this one on the light, on the light, or on the light side of things. How are we doing on time? We need to move on to something else. But um, I decided to just go ahead and keep this going so that you could see the uh, the trust the process part of this. That, you know, you just keep adding layers until you like it. 
and then even then when you add your stamping and stenciling it's gonna still change it up some Oops, so where are we let's see what do these need this is just mostly red black i don't really i've got a little bit of green back there i might add a little bit of yeah sure buttermilk 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 it's really thick on there just kind of lightly just like that and then take this one which is almost dry and press it down I don't know if I want to add that much yellow or not but I do have one here that is probably a little bit similar I mix it with the buttermilk but it'll be even less yellow but bring a little bit of the yellow in not to that one though. <laughs> Where do I want yellow? Oh, do I want to add anything to that? I just want a little, a little. Ooh, ooh, just. Up, down, up, down. Just trying to kind of skim it up, down. Down, up. Down. I actually pressed harder that time. See, that one was one I actually really liked how it was too, but it's a lot lighter now and still has a lot of that really nice green in the back. It's, it's all good. It's fine. Everything's fine. I know. I obliterated it. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to do that with this too, though. Don't hate me. Even if I just do it on the edges, then it's, it's not as apparent that there's all that. Alright, I don't hate that. That's that's fine. Then I didn't obliterate the whole middle. So maybe we'll do that one on this one too. Just whoops. Just kind of coming in from the edge. Whoops. And then lifting up as I go in. Because I want it thicker on the edges. Alright, there we go. Now it kind of, that actually, kind of wish I had done that on some others. It's okay, we still can. Alright, so these two are done. They're done, 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 done. Dun, 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 dun. And this one, I think that, I think that one hasn't had any braring on it yet, so just bring in, I see it's, I'm pressing hard so it doesn't feel like light braring, but there's not a lot on the brayer, which makes it a light braring. And then, so what if I went ahead and found my Payne's Gray now? Do I want to do Payne's Gray on the edges? I don't know. How about lipstick red? Bring that back in a little bit. Try that edge thing like we did because I liked what happened with that. Just kind of gives it a little bit of a border. Probably get, oops, gets a little bit of paint on the other side too. Just gonna press that down there so it's a little bit less dendritic y. Gonna put another piece of paper on top like I did the other ones by the side. Alright, there we go. Alright, I'm liking this. Making me happy. Um, this one, we've got some of that, oh wait, oh yeah, let's find one that still needs something, that needs some brightness added to it maybe. Did you guys hear that? Dun it, dun it, 
dun it, dun it, dun it. Now that's all you hear when I prayer now from my, from from henceforth and evermore. Uh, let's see this one. I think I can get away with some paint gray on this one maybe, or do I want to do green? Because I've got green in the background. So maybe I want to bring that back to the front. This one is Heavy Body Liquitex Viridian Hue. Oh, there's one of my paints gray. Okay, that's what I was looking for a minute ago. This is a different green than what's on there, but that's all right. I'm just coming in on the edges. If I have like a dark green ink that I could then bring this color to the middle with. Um, I know I probably have some distress ink that is similar in color. All right, there's that. I like that. All right, I'm. Oh, also, I for the edges I could use my. Oh, I haven't got my stamp yet. But I do have a grunge stamp now in the shop, and um, but I, and I have the original piece that that started it all. Do I want to? Oh yeah, this green might be nice. And uh, so yeah, maybe we'll use that a little bit too. Oh, crumbs. That was. Now I've got more paint on my hands, but that's okay. That's okay too. I know you can't hardly tell that anything's being added, but when you look at it, you can probably see, yep, there's stuff on the edge, which makes it nice and grungy. Some stamping will bring that together. Uh, I think this one I could probably get away with Payne's Gray on, um, get away with. I like, I like a navy blue. Payne's Gray is basically a navy blue. I add it to every journal, a navy blue or Payne's Gray. Um, even if the journal doesn't already have it in it, I will probably add a pop of that color because it's, I just like it. It's a neutral to me, for one. Just coming in on the edges. Whoops. I don't want it to be a straight line though. And I do have my Twilight ink, so I can add some inking of this color in a stencil and or stamping to bring this into the middle a little bit more. All right, now, I probably got some on that side. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Let's just press this down. Oops, yeah, we get any more over there. It's, it's, it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. I'm gonna move that over though so that I don't get quite so much on there. I don't know if Dad went for a walk or what, but he's back. I gotta open the window, I'm hot. <laughs> or turn my fan on, my husband won't be happy if I open the window, but. All right, see that one is just super, super subtle. So I'll probably add some more to that. I don't think I've added any brown on any of these, but I might do that with the stamping. Brown and black because they're both in between the kit and the ephemera. They're both, both those colors are in there. I don't know. Is that looking a little bit too Fourth of July? Should I add? I don't know what I'll add. All right, I'm going to bring in some more green, which is going to mix with the blue, which is going to make it a nice, really, really dark green, most likely. getting boring. Hope not. I mean this is basically a bonus video because I needed to get this done and I'm not sure how much energy I'll have after I get this part done. I might have to come back tomorrow to do the next layer and then I wouldn't have, I already didn't have a midweek video. So no. there's that. There's no dark green in the middle. It kind of bugs me a little bit, but that's okay. I can add it with stamping and stenciling or add a darker color. I don't know. Right now, though, the middle is... 
Oh, let me do a different one first. This one would be perfect for having the green on the edge. This one I'm kind of getting close, just, just at the edges a little bit. And probably getting a bunch on the front. Oh well. <laughs> this is why I picked Renji kits to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of the greens in there had a little bit of blue to them anyway. So that edges that off nicely. I could do a strip down the middle too. So yeah, we've got some paint on this side. It's fine. It, it works fine and perfectly for this. Uh, what I want to do here is um, I've got some aqua and some brighter green in here. Um, and the red. But the blue, I think I want to bring in. Where's that brighter? Here it is bring in some of this brighter blue so on the edges as well so it makes a little bit more sense oh shoot just on the very very on the very edges just so that it's not it's, I don't know. It's just, I just needed it to make a little more sense that the dark on the edges and bring one of the color because it didn't. That color wasn't in the middle at all. Is what was bothering me. So that might have improved it some. Also, I'm just gonna come across. There's only a tiny bit on the brayer. Can't even hardly get. But it is bringing. All right now. That brought some of that color into the middle and that only happened because I've got the little flower debris on my thing is why I'm getting those marks I'm happy for those marks though that's kind of a good thing what about this one I think I will use the stamp I mean I don't have the stamp step you know what I'm saying right the thing I use to uh, create the stamp that's in the shop now uh, you want to see what I'm talking about I bet you do need it. Of course I do. Ooh, let's see if the tulip bread works. Let's hope that it does. Um, so when I say the shop, what I'm talking about is um, pmartiststudio.com. My stencil designs are shown there along with uh, Carrie the Crafter and many other designers. So, all right, I'm just going to take this stamp and I, I, there's other colors probably already on this stamp. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I'm just going to use this as a border. I think the tulip red might be just the right red for this because it does have just a little bit of uh, orange to it. So that's nice. This is a permanent VersaFine Claire permanent ink. And this is just another way to add a border to your pages. And if you don't want to overlap, you just put a little piece of paper there. There we go. Um, that one worked nicely. That's like, um, you might need to see what the whole stamp looks like to be able to figure out which stamp it is in the shop. The Astro something. I don't know. But it makes a nice lacy looking border. So that's what that stamp looks like as a whole stamp. I'm going to do that on a few pages. So if I do it on one page, I usually will do it on a few pages. E even if they might not all end up in the same journal. Um, it's still, that's still what I want to do. Uh, I think I'll do it this way. Which way did I do it the first time? I might have done it that way the first time. I'm not sure. I'll get a different look. But it's kind of a lacy look. And I could just go on the sides. I don't even have to go on the top and bottom. So this way I'm doing it so that it's this half. I think before I did it where it was that half. But it does give like a nice little lacy effect. Which is cool. Who knew? 
who knew you could get lace with uh, Astro Starry things? I mean, I could have guessed, maybe. No, I guess I must have guessed because I saw it and I was like, ooh, let me try that. Also, instead of going on the sides, you could just do the bottom even. And on the red, it's just really subtle. And then at the top, I could do the twilight. You know I can't help myself, right? It was my grandparents' favorite song. When the twilight is come. Ooh, it's my prayer. In case you can't tell from 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 how I'm singing. I'm off. I don't have a good ear. I've been told I don't have a good ear. But I've also been told I have a good eye. So I don't think I'd rather have a good eye. Because um I don't really want to I love to sing, but um not necessarily for all the people. Alright, so there we go. I've got one color up here, another color up down there. I like that. I really like this stamp for a lacy edge. Who knew? Who knew? Um, oh. No, I think I did the, the blue, which is sort of a Payne's gray. It's closest to the, it's in there is why. Doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of ink it up for each side. And if I wanted it to be less noticeable that it gets lighter on each side, I could start in the middle and then do the edges. I love that as a little lacy edge. What do you guys think? I'm loving it. I just kind of lift. I just didn't put it down all the way in the middle. So that it wouldn't. I'm just kind of pressing. It. I've got a little bit empty there, but that's all right. It's it's fine. It's, it's okay if you overlap it too, because it's just a lacy little thing, and it's well. If you if it were a if it were a Halloween journal, it would look like spider webs. But here we're just saying lace. Now that I saw the spider webs, I'm not sure if I can unsee that, but. All right, that's, so So, like I said, any of the foam stamps you see me use are definitely from pmartiststudio.com. All right, this one's just laying here, which is why this one's gonna happen. Um, I'm gonna do this one around the edge too, using the Twilight. And uh, it is just the alphabet. Um, from the Tim Holtz, one of one of his text ones that he's got. I can probably link it below. I'm just kind of doing half and half there, just bordering it. Do I want to border the sides too? I could. Just keeping it the same direction for my. I could have turned it. And that would have been fine too. I'm just moving it as I do it so I don't get the same letters. Oh, I have it upside down. Was it upside down over there? Nope, it's upside right over here and it's upside down over here. Eh, whatever. Maybe I'll end up putting a, uh, oh, nope, okay. It's upside right over here and upside down over here. <laughs> Cause I did not look at the other side. Yeah, and so, yeah, now all this is upside down, too, but that's all right. It's just background, so it's fine. If I want to, like, have that be a little bit not quite as obvious, I could come in with this stamp. And then I could come in with some stenciling, too, but just kind of... That's just going to kind of hide the... um the lettering behind like it's just gonna I don't know I don't know we'll see does it help it not be as apparent that it's upside down now or not it might it might not um could always come over it with like big circles or something like um you know like um something like a solid 
something that would block out some of the layers. Like what? I don't know. You can do as many layers as you want um, on anything. I'm just doing page edges today, apparently. Just finishing, you know, testing the process. And we need some page edges. Which way does this one go? This one can go any which way, so it's all good. And I could even, on the digitals themselves, add some border. Let's turn this over. Oh, actually, yeah, I still want, still want that there. Let's find a green that we like. Ooh, I have a library green. That would probably work. Library green, that's actually what it's called. I do have a permanent green that should work. I don't want that on this side though. <laughs> that was bound to happen. I don't know why I didn't just do the edge, but... Sometimes I would actually go over the whole thing with this stamp, because it is a nice, neutrally mixed media stamp. But at the moment, my brain is on edging for some reason. We can go like in the middle there since that's going to be and that will leave some writing space or a place to add pictures or whatever there. And I was going to shift it. Where did that script stamp come? It's right here. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, let's see, we've got green, red, but there is some brown as well. So let's grab the brown. I'm going to do the fallen leaves. I think that will be just fine. Just going to just do a little border with the letters. I do have a script stamp from, I'm just pressing at the top. I don't need it to be like legible. I just want it to just be a little bit of a border. You know what I mean? Jelly bean. And even if it barely shows, it's good. So you can add a border to your journal pages, the printed pages too. There you go, there's that one. I think that one. I still need to do some stenciling. Oh, and I forgot about this stamp. I like this stamp. This one's a red, a red, red something stamp. A red, I'll try to link it. Deep red. It's a deep red stamp. I <laughs> actually have the packaging for it. Shocker. Shocker, I know. But for Christmas, I really like to use um, this and Houndstooth and the Damasks. Like, the first year I did Mixed Media Christmas, that's what I used a lot of. Um, this year, probably not as much Damask. Although I do have some stamps and stencils that I could use. Because uh, it's more like a barn kind of a deal. Alright, so we've got the blue and I wanted to bring the blue up into... into the picture a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is come down to the corner here and just press there and there. So that brings the blue up and also here. And I got it all the way up, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Still some in the middle here. There we go. And whatever's left on the stamp, we'll just put in the middle like that. So that brought the blue all the way across the page. So that now the edge hopefully makes a little bit more sense. Although I think, what color is this? Is this the, um, I think I know what color it is. I think. I don't know. Do it. It's not surfboard. It's not Italian sage. It's that uh, other blue. Oh, it's this one, I think. Villa green. I think villa green is part of it. Villa green or sage. Either one of those. We'll do the sage maybe. I'm just gonna do like I did a little bit ago. I could. Well, I could even use a brush. Should we use a brush this time? 
brush, a brush, a brush, a, a bigger, bigger brush. Yeah, not that one. Actually, I just found this. So I'm going to just dip that in there. Get some of the paint out of the middle because it's really would have been better probably to use the just use that this is one of my favorite things to use I get it at the in the embroidery section at Joanne Fabrics uh, so you can check your embroidery section I know my friend Patty has not found one so I'll have to go get one for her because I'm going to be sending her some scraps But yeah, it is one of my favorite things. So that lightened the edges while still keeping... They're still dark, but now they're a lot lighter. And we brought one of these colors to the outside as well, like I did on the other one. Is it perfect? No. Like I said, we're trusting the process. Oh. So I need this. And this is how I get paint on the back side of my... Well, this doesn't have an acrylic block. This is a, a different thing. This is the Villa Green. I haven't turned my fan on yet. Well, you're welcome because then you don't have to hear my fan, but you do have to hear me complain because I'm hot. I know you're thinking, well, why aren't you just using your stamp? I can use mark making too. It doesn't have to just be stamps. Use what you have. That would be my point. Trust the process and use what you have. So that helps to disperse the red a little bit so it's not giant blocks of red anymore either. Just using an overall mixed media stamp like that helps with that aspect of things. Let's see. Do we want to like maybe bring some of that dark blue back in using that same kind of process? I don't think this is the color I used. I don't know where the color is. It was the Liquitex. Oh my goodness, that's good and grungy and messy. It has um, gotten covered on my desk is, is probably what happened. Found it. Although I think this one could work too, but we'll just use this for now. Spread it out. Press this into it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't even have to cover the whole thing. You could just do it like in a few places like that. It's almost like a tree skirt now. See, now it makes sense for Christmas if you think of it like a tree skirt. Or an ornament. Ornaments around. It still works. It still works. Maybe bring a little bit of green into this one. <laughs> Alright, so eventually the paint comes back off of these things, which makes for some interesting things happening. See, that's the paint, as it gets wet, comes off. Just flick it off, it'll be fine. So now we have just a touch of green on there, which is nice. And we are just trusting the process. I think this also has this green. Oops, and got it on that side, didn't I? Yep, that's, that's, that's what my hand looks like now. Need a little bit more. You know what I do with paints? So, oh, that, and I think they look like something, but they don't. Oh, we're over an hour now. So, um, I will show you really quickly what they look like, how where we are right now in the trusting the process. <sighs> and, uh, and then the next video should be me adding more stamping and stenciling and finishing them off. Some of them... Some of them may even get like a, a little bit of coffee dyed paper so there'll be some journaling. But that will be probably decided once they become a journal. So here's that one. And that one. I know I wish I had them to compare so you could see the befores and afters of how they started and where they are now because they don't look anything like how they started. So I guess I'm kind of glad that I ended up uh, recording this part. I was going to do this part off screen 
just adding more of the base layers and then come back for the stenciling and stamping. But then you would have been like, but how did you get that look? Like, how did you go from where you started to where you ended up? And now you know, because I recorded it for you. Wasn't that nice of me? <laughs> and, you know, I didn't pause a lot. So this was pretty much an hour's worth. That has inks in the background. So that one's quite a bit different than the other ones. Um... So we'll see what happens with that one. Maybe I'll use it to make ephemera. I don't know. Um, like just or back it was. I don't know. Or that one might just get. I don't know. Or I'll make another one that's similar enough. I don't know. Or add a little sprays to something. All right, there's that one. Oops. And that one. And that one. Yeah. Is that all of them? I think that might be. Oh, the one that's on the other side. No, nope, not all of them. I started putting stuff over here there's that one and that one and I think this is the last one and I will try to remember to link the kit as well that this that this uh, digital is oh is it the wild poppy one two three I think it's that's where it came from but I'm not totally I can't remember for sure I will link it below it's like Christmas patchwork or something like that in case you didn't see it in the last video so now you can see kind of how these are gonna look next to each other if I do this like that so now you can kind of see what why I picked the colors I picked although that doesn't make sense with that but that's okay um but see there is some blues in this and, and more paint got on it and that's how you know it was uh, homemade you know so you know that it's, it's might be a printable on one side but definitely there's paint on the other side and it's got some plaids and stuff. I love plaid. I'm I'm a sucker for some plaid. And some holly and trees and whatnot. I might add some whimsical trees. To See, this one makes more sense if it's across from that one. See, now, now you know why I use that blue. Now you get it. See, can you imagine if those are next to each other in a journal? How nice that will look. What did I just do? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> like, I know, like, we're already, like, over an hour, and I'm still, like, messing around and fussing around. What's up with that? Fussing. F-U-T-Z. That's what I said. I didn't say a bad word. But I did want to show you. So that's what it would look like on that side, which is just a little bit of blue there. And that is what it would look like. Isn't that, that going to look so cool in a journal? I'm so excited. I mean, I wouldn't even need to add any more. And it looks pretty cool. But I will probably add some stenciling and stamping. And, uh, which is inks. Which, you know, then we're adding to the paint with inks. Which then makes it mixed media. I hope you all have a delightful day. Love you.